Why are they so interested in what people shop for on Sundays? You either buy something or you don't. Who cares what day of the week it is? Demand fluctuates according to what day of the week it is. People are more prepared to buy shit on a Sunday. Why else do you think they're so keen on opening shops? It's a good time to shop. On other days, people shop because they need to get stuff. On Sundays, they shop because they've got nothing better to do. Speak for yourself. I happen to enjoy the weekend. Well, I enjoy Friday night and Saturday. But Sunday? What is there to actually do? Recover. And supposing you don't get drunk on a Saturday night? Supposing you stay sober, you wake up on Sunday morning before midday, you've got ten hours to kill before scrap heap challenge. What do you do? Kill myself. You start watching Scrap Heap Challenge, I'll do it for you. Next time Sunday comes along, just ask yourself, what am I doing that's so great they gave me a whole day to do it? Most people need Sundays to do the things your mother still does for you. And what are you up to this Sunday? I'm seeing Rich. Oh, is he coming to collect his stuff? No, dinner. Going for a walk? Are you serious? When was the last time we walked across the park? You walked across the park? Don't you think it's about time we did? Which bit of the park? We well, don't need a bit. I need something to aim for, otherwise I'll just give up halfway. <gasps> what about that pub? The one on the near side of the park. So we walk all the way around the park and end up at the pub. Why the decoy? Why not just go straight to the pub? We'll get the map and we'll choose somewhere on the other side of the park. Where's the map? Fuck it. <clears throat> What's on TV? until you interrupted. They're actually going to build a hovercraft out of scrap metal. Don't get too excited. The engine's too heavy, it'll sink. Maybe they'll add some buoyancy in the latter stages. Trust me. It's a repeat episode. Oh, give the ending away, why don't you? I thought you were gay. Being gay doesn't mean I can't take an interest in technical stuff. It just means I have an excuse not to do any myself. You're expecting anyone? Who is it? Yes. Give me a clue. Well, there's a woman with a bag. Describe the bag. Marks and Spencer. Oh, shit! It's your mum! It's not the Gestapo. Don't tell me you can't see what she's doing. She's delivering fruit. Fruit's just her equivalent of a search warrant. Don't just sit there. Help me clear up. Oh, the neighbours must have let her in. The bastards. Hello, Mrs. Lynch. Hello, Sona. Mm. Hello, darling. If she'd give me some warning, I might have been out. Oh. How are you feeling? Fine. A little bit peaky. It's a hard week. Oh. How's your chest? Sona was just having a cigarette. It's, a, it's amazing how many one person can get through. It is Sunday. You don't mind, do you? If I was that worried about my condition, I, I wouldn't be living with a smoker. Condition? I'm asthmatic. Oh, thanks. <coughs> How long you had asthma? It's very mild. I've just been a little prone to chest infections since I was a teenager. About the same time as when you started smoking? Thereabouts. Your mum doesn't know you smoke, does she? What mums are like. You can be so overprotective. You're 27. Why don't you just tell her? Because. We've got this mother-son thing going on. She likes to think I'm the perfect son. You've got a shit job. You're not in a stable relationship. You can't even drive a car. What difference is smoking going to make? Because smoking's like a public admission. You lack self-control. It's one thing to have shortcomings. It's another to rub them in my mum's face. 
I don't go around with a badge saying I've got a shit job, do I? You did when you worked in Burger King. <clears throat> you won't tell the others, will you? It's just, you know what they're like. Are you coming for a cigarette? Well, don't worry, we checked. Your mum's global positioning satellite's out of range for a couple of hours. I've done a preliminary circuit of the rooftop. No sign of Mrs Lynch. We are go for lighter. Over. What I can't understand is how you managed to tell them you're gay, but not that you smoke. Being gay and smoking are different. No, I understand that part. It's like admitting a weakness. I'm vulnerable, I want to look cool, I need something to keep my hands busy. Being gay or smoking? I just don't want them to be disappointed in me. If they were going to be disappointed in you, don't you think they'd have done it by now? They weren't disappointed when you told them you were gay? It was a personal triumph for Mum. She has this preconception that all gay men have special bonds with their mothers and read it as a testament to our relationship. Maybe she planned it all along. Has anyone seen Nadia today? Who? Our secretary. We have a secretary. Allegedly. Word is she's a ringer. Management wanted to see what would happen if they gave us somebody utterly incapable of doing any work. Somebody said you were looking for me. Where have you been? I was at a meeting. Secretaries don't have meetings. It was a meeting of secretaries. Well, we're having a proper meeting now, so could we have some proper coffee when you're not too busy fucking about? We're not having a proper meeting, are we? Oh, I doubt it. Zoe? We did book the room. We should at least discuss something. Did you manage to look at those figures over the weekend? Didn't get the chance, sorry. No worries. Got ages anyway. Don't know why I asked. So, has anyone done anything interesting lately? What the fuck is that? Use a briefcase. Why? I have bought something which, while it may be hideous, is entirely practical. It's certainly hideous. It's about time I stopped buying things just because they look cool. No way. If you wanted that to be on your list, you should have said so before you bought it. Otherwise, how can we know you didn't just buy it, bring it into work, realise it was hideous, then try to pass it off as a thing on your list? I would never buy that <laughs> on purpose. Nice try, though. I thought I told Nadia to make the coffee. She had to make a phone call. Oh, well, that's very convenient. Who to? Why couldn't she do it later? I don't know. Do you want me to go ask her? No. Just put the coffee down. <sighs> Thank you. We've decided what your thing should be. Not the briefcase. You're going to tell your parents you smoke. Smoking's not big enough to be on my list. What? I'm buying a burgundy hideous briefcase is. This is about your relationship with your parents. I don't want to upset them. Sooner or later you need to stop doing what your parents think is good for you and start doing what you think is good for you. Or at least what you know is bad for you, but are prepared to keep doing anyway because you've got no self-control. You're coming out as a smoker. All you're doing is being honest. That can only be a good thing. You might even find it liberating. So you'd tell your mum you smoke, would you? I don't smoke. Of course not. You're too worried what your mummy might think. It's disgusting. So she'd be fine, would she, if you announced you smoked? She'd be surprised. Maybe a little upset at first, but she'd understand that I'm an adult and it's my decision and it's never going to happen in the first place. You ever noticed how Dominic likes to project his own inadequacies on the people around him? Hmm. Like when he tries to make out everyone else is a hypochondriac, even when they have sickly dispositions. You do not have a sickly disposition, Conrad. I wasn't talking about me specifically. Although for your information, I am unusually prone to illness. <laughs> Fuck off you are. I have the flu as we speak. Not proper flu. I just choose not to make a big song and dance about it. If you had proper flu, you wouldn't have been able to get out of bed this morning. What do you think all that wailing was? What you have is a cold. Cold? I know a cold one, I've got one. This is much more severe. 
Well, trust me, it's not flu. Well, then it's somewhere between a cold and the proper flu. It's called hypochondria. Both you and Dominic have it. Can everyone please stop comparing me and Dominic? We're completely different people. I'm not saying you're identical. I'm just saying you have a few things in common. Shit jobs, hypochondria, need for your mother's approval. Mum? Hi. Yeah, I'm not so bad. Yeah. Still a little bit fluey, but... I did, yeah. That's right. Echinacea for the symptomatic relief of colds, influenza-type infections, and similar upper respiratory tract infections. Actually, I've got to go. I'll call you back. Love you too. Mums. Why did you tell you weren't feeling well? Did I? You said you had the flu. I said I felt a little bit fluey. It's 4.30 on a Monday. How are you supposed to feel? For your information, I'm carrying a small head cold. Bollocks. You're inventing illnesses for the benefit of your mother. All right, so what if I am? If I try being positive and make out things are going brilliantly, we just run out of things to say. It makes her feel useful if I'm ill. It's Munchausen by proxy by proxy. What are you doing? Get off. Give me Get the phone back. Give, give me the phone back. But, but, Comrade. Uh, uh, uh. Hello? Hey, Mum. Yeah. No, I'm a bit knackered, actually. No, no. No, I think it's the air conditioning. <coughs> Never. Never. Not even just to try it, just to see what all the fuss is about. Not even a drag. What do you think we should do this Sunday? It's Monday. So? Why are you even mentioning Sunday when it's only Monday? Because maybe the real reason we always end up doing nothing on Sunday is because we never plan anything. We just go through the week assuming that we're going to do something and it's not until it actually arrives that we think, shit, it's here, at which point it's too late. You start phoning around on a Sunday morning you just basically look like somebody who has nothing better to do. That should be on your gravestone. Here lies Shona. She basically had nothing better to do and then she died. Anyone, what are we going to do this Sunday? Someone say something, anything. Do you know what the bad part about getting run over is? Is there a good part? No, but the really bad part. I thought if you got run over, that was the really bad part. The humiliation. I think that would be the worst part about getting run over. Wriggling around, yelping on the floor like a twat. What if you broke your leg? Wouldn't that be the worst part? That's what everyone assumes. But personally, if I was actually run over, I don't think the first thing that would go through my mind would be, shit, my legs. I take it you've never actually been run over? No, but I've had close calls. There have been many occasions on which I've stepped onto the road without looking and suddenly thought, shit, a car could easily have been coming along and I could have been run over. But in each case, do you know what the first thing I thought was? Phew, I could have just made a massive twat of myself. I'm sorry, Dominic, I'm gonna have to stop you there. I've given you at least 20 seconds to make this relevant. You said to say something. I've decided. I am going to tell my mum I smoke. When? Sunday. If you want us to be there. Not a chance. You don't think it might help put it in perspective if you've got us puffing away beside you? I don't smoke. Yeah, we've gathered that, Dominic. I was using us for those of us who do. I want to come, though. Sorry. This is something I've got to do on my own. Cheers, Mum. <laughs> you wouldn't mind if I smoked, would you? Where did that come from? I'm just curious. You're old enough now to decide for yourself. 
But would you mind? I'd be a bit upset. But you'd understand that I'm an adult and I'm free to make my own decisions, right? Well, I hope you don't smoke. You know I don't. Because it's disgusting. Well, if I have an argument about it, whether I smoke or not, the point is, it's not your business. You can't expect me not to have opinions. I'm your mother. Well, as long as you don't shove them down my throat. If that's what it takes to stop you smoking... I don't smoke. Promise? I don't promise. I don't have to promise. That's the whole point of this conversation. I promise. I've never even had a drag in my entire life. Don't jump, please. For you were going shopping? For fags. You got something better to do? It's Sunday. You know my mother's coming round. What? Just tell me when and I'll disappear for a minute. I don't know when exactly. She's coming though. She should be. Haven't you asked her? I've maintained radio silence. I left an ambiguous message on my voicemail. Should be a hot bit of curiosity by now. <laughs> What have I missed? What are you doing here? Relax. I'm here for moral support. And a ringside seat. I've asked the neighbours not to let people in. Have we missed anything? We? Katie's just parking the car. Joke. But I got some ice cream. This isn't the fucking multiplex. Now I need one. Out. Uh, it's my house. This is something I'd like to do on my own without an audience, so please go and do something. Like what? It's Sunday. Up to you. There's an entire fucking planet out there. Everything's closed. Here's the map. Now fuck off. What now? Please fuck off. Are you sure you know where you're going? Trust me, it's my local. And according to my calculations, we've done a complete circuit of the park. I didn't want to go straight there, otherwise there would have been no point in walking. I thought that was the point in walking. Excuse me, um, have you seen a pub around here? And which pub might that be? The one on this side of the park. <laughs> there ain't been no pub this side of the park some 20 years now. Your local, you say? You should get out more. I could have sworn there was a pub around here. Are you sure you're not confusing this park with another one? There is more than one, you know. It's one of the reasons why we rented the flat in the first place. To be near the park with the pub. You didn't check before you moved in? Are you ever disappointed in me? No, of course not. I'm really proud of you. Even though I'm single, I'm unlikely to give you grandchildren and my job's terrible. Your job isn't terrible. You're a computer programmer. Technically, I'm a data processor. What does that mean? It's a bit like stacking shelves, but without the travel. Anyway, can we not make this about my career? Does that count as a career? Mum, you know how some people smoke? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm one of those people. I smoke. You sure? I buy cigarettes. I smoke them sometimes as many as 20 a day. I'm surprised you didn't know. Well, how could I know? The aftershave, the asthma, the way I suddenly offered to walk the dog. I thought that was just part of you being gay. I 
I'll put it out. Only if you want to. It's not the same with you here. <gasps> oh. Cold still niggling away. Got some vitamin C. Well, slow release capsules. <laughs> I can't believe she took it so badly. The job, I mean. Well, he had to tell her sometime. At least you've done your thing. Yeah. Kind of taking the edge off smoking. If you told her ten years ago, you might have been able to quit. You told your parents you smoke and you're only 27. And Dominic can tick that one off too. How about convincing a parent you smoke even though you don't? Now that she knows, you might as well start. You can't take it up at my age. It's like swimming. You've got to take it up young. At least have a drag. It can make you look cool. Can I put it on my list? Don't see why not. I'm giving up straight afterwards, though. <laughs> uh, see what you've been missing? Uh, oh, nice and bummed. <laughs> 